seven car features that we no longer see. As technology progresses, new features arrive and old ones leave often faster than we can keep track of. Before we know it, the thing we use on a daily basis is gone. Here are seven automatic features that got thrown in the scrapyard. Number one, bench seats. The most recent American production cars to offer a bench seat in the front was the Chevy Impala, which believe it or not, Chevrolet only stopped making in 2015, just a couple years ago. For most vehicles, the bench seat was phased out during the dawn of the seat belt, as to fit it on a bench seat was an awkward affair. Back before the seat belts were even included in cars, much less mandatory to wear. Three passengers could fit comfortably in the front of most cars, or possibly four if one was a child. These days doing of that is highly illegal in most developed countries, although a lot of third world countries still do it. In the event of an accident, the bench seats are a disaster, offering the occupant very little support and the chairs often folded in on themselves. Number 2. Tail fins. Cars inspired by planes seem to be a bit dated these days, but it was once all the rage. Saab sold themselves pretty much on the fact that they made fighter jets in their spare time, but I can't honestly think of any examples like that these days. In the past century, however, it was one of the most desired features on a car. General Motors designer chief Harley Earl thought to have been the brainchild of tail fins, making the 1942 Cadillac Series 62 sedan inspired by the famous World War II plane, the Lockheed P-38 Lightning. Five years or so later, most people have had enough of the war style, with fins becoming more and more space age instead. Tail fins became larger and larger, leading to some really bizarre vehicles until they fell out of fashion in the 60s completely. I couldn't find an example of uh, cars that still have them, although the Cadillac XTS from 2012 does hark back to the design somewhat. Number 3. Antennas. Seriously, when was the last time you saw a modern car with a folding antenna? It seems that the back in the day was something to be proud of, the longer the antenna the better. Pioneered mainly by Japanese brands obsessed with technology, Having an electric folding antenna on a car demonstrated how high-tech you really were. Nowadays, cars still have antennas, but they look completely different. Often embedded into a car with a windscreen or connected through a shark fin type antenna. To be honest, it's not much of a great loss having these things gone. Most of the automatic telescoping antennas made an awful noise when you turn on the radio or just case, you know, extra drag when driving. Still, it was fun to see them go up and down on the road. Number 4. Split front windscreens. The split windscreen was thought to be made for cost reasons due to the fact that it's cheaper and easier to make a split windscreen than one bigger piece of glass. General Motors introduced this on most of their vehicles in 1936. These days, the split screen has become an iconic must-have item on classic cars notably the Volkswagen Camper. But split screens are no longer legal for production. And even if they were, glass manufacturing technology has come a long way. Number five, full-size spare tires. Although some cars still have this feature, the majority of normal road-going vehicles don't bother any longer. The main point of full-size spare was that you could put it on stow the flat tire in your trunk and carry on driving for as long as you want. Unlike spurs of today which are designed to be used for limited distances at speeds under 50 miles per hour. Most being forgetful or lazy didn't quite do this correctly, though leaving on the spare for months or even years without replacing it. Only until they get the next puncture and realize they've got a flat tire in their boot. Still, it tends to be used on the off-road vehicles which have higher chance of wear and tear than a 4x4 could experience on the, on the trails. Number 6. Fender mirrors. It's actually a cool idea, allowing drivers to keep their eyes looking forward on the road when driving. There are a few issues with this design, however, such as the lack of adjustment when moving 
or the large view in distance from the driver eyes to the mirror. This feature was especially popular with Japanese autom automakers such as Honda and Datsun and until the late 1970s when a side mirror became more suitable. Passenger cars only required one mirror on the passenger side until new legislation came in 1986. That said, it would be interesting to see a modern car with these mirrors, perhaps electronically controlled for easy adjustment. Number 7. Steel wheels. Alloy wheels might be normal today, however in the year 2000 it was still seen as somewhat of a luxury. On today's vehicles, alloy wheels are featured on all but the cheapest of cars, with a lot of mid-range cars throwing out the steel wheel option altogether. Many manufacturers like Audi and BMW don't even bother offering them, although they are still popular with business fleet vehicles in the poverty specs. Steel wheels with hubcaps was standard issue until the early 90s, as our wheels were an attractive but expensive option during that time. Today lightweight alloy wheels help boost fuel economy and most people are happy to pay for an improved appearance. The one thing that can be said for steel is that if you bend one, replacing the set will cost you no more than a good night's out. So that's it guys. Any features that I forgot? Let me know in the comments below and I will try to reply within 24 hours. See you in the next one.